In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Word of God for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, July 19th, the year of our Lord, 2020. Jesus said, Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. Here ends the reading of the inspired, inerrant Word of our God. Amen. Things will not always be the way they are today. Sin will not always infect us. Death will not always approach. There will be an end to both, and the process has already begun. The kingdom of God is here in your midst, and with the coming of Jesus Christ in his first advent, the word has become flesh and dwelt among us. He has come to his own, and his own did not receive him. He has called out to others, and by the Spirit they have received him. The reign of God does not happen by force, hammer, or sickle, nor by persuasion. The Lord wills to reign by grace, mercy, and forgiveness through gentleness, rather than by oppression, fear, or force. He is a God of love. Love speaks. Love invites. Love grants forgiveness. We learn of his great love for us in the midst of these dark and latter days as we soon approach the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus speaks in parables that those who have ears may hear and believe on his name. The sower sows good seed, and this seed is the sons of the kingdom, believers, Christians. He plants Christians all throughout the world. Wherever there are Christians, there are churches. And wherever there are churches, there are Christians. He plants his church and Christians by the power of the word, as taught in the parable of the sower. His word works in the church. He appoints pastors in his church. He reigns over the hearts of men by grace. The Lord of heaven and earth is present with his people, serving them with word and sacrament, the means of grace. God gives more and more of himself. Like God, Christians are also full of grace and mercy towards other people. Christians are fruitful and they multiply in every way in the family, spreading the gospel, the fruits of the Holy Spirit in lives of good works as we serve our neighbor. This is the reign of our God in the hearts of men, and we are devoted to this above all things. God comes first. God's kingdom comes first. It is our priority. Now, the kingdom of God actually looks like the kingdoms of men, but the reign of God does not govern like the rulers of this world. The Savior plants Christians to be the city on a hill, light and salt, wise like serpents, but harmless as doves. Christians are planted to work, they have tasks, they have fruit to bear, they serve, they love, and so on. But while men slept, an enemy has come in and planted bad seed among the kingdom. Adam had a vocation, but Adam slept. Fathers have a vocation, but they often sleep. Good men did nothing. While Christians slept, the devil came in and did his dastardly work. The enemy sowed his seed, and the two kinds of seed actually sprout up together. This is what happened in the fall into sin, wheat and weeds side by side. This is not the will of the sower or of the Savior, Jesus Christ. The enemy of the kingdom did this, and all of this has happened under the watch of the sons of the kingdom. The enemy wishes to choke out the wheat. The enemy wishes to harm the sower himself. The devil wishes to steal away Christ's redeemed and tries to get the believers to give in to the weeds in the midst, the ways of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now the way of the weeds is evident in the church. Some say worship is not important. We have often surrendered the Lord's day. We have grown to love fellowship with the weeds of this world. We want Jesus, but we don't want his call to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. Our will has often surrendered, not to Christ, but to the devil and the world and our own sinful flesh. We have given our children to marry unbelievers. We have tolerated the enemy of the word in our midst. We have been deceived by the voice of the world. We have let false doctrine creep into our churches and pulpits. Pastors, elders, church leaders, and laymen distract themselves with the ways of the world while the enemy is laboring in the field of God. 
You see, the danger is not outside the kingdom, not outside the church, but inside the kingdom and inside the church. This calls for repentance, and God is calling to you and to me to repent of this. So what should be done about this situation? Well, if it were my garden, I'd pull out all the weeds and I'd poison them. But that is not the way of the kingdom of God. It is about the reign of God in the midst of the church. God is reigning in our midst by grace. The sower of the sons of the kingdom is concerned for the whole field. He's concerned for the world. He has come to give his life as a ransom for all. He suffered, he bled, and he died for the sins of all people on the cross. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Our God is a God of love. He gives to the object of his love his beloved son, Jesus Christ. He gives himself, unites himself to the world. Even the weeds can be converted. Even the unbeliever can be saved. The remedy is not wrath and judgment now, but grace and patience. Believers, they stay married to unbelievers. The church has no political authority to punish sin. In the church, there is to be discipline, but with the world, there is to be patience. We bear the cross of Jesus in this world. We suffer, we groan, and we don't like it, but it must be. God wills all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is still the day of grace. And we are to be busy evangelizing and proclaiming the gospel of salvation to all people. Letting weeds grow side by side with the wheat, the sower alone suffers the cost. We who are Christians are always his Christians. And any suffering in this life is always suffering as his dear children. We are not our own. We are not left to fend for ourselves in this world. We are not left to endure alone. Christ has not forsaken us. We receive from his pierced side blood and water. We are baptized in his name. Today we eat his body and we drink his blood in the Holy Communion for the forgiveness of our sins. This is most needed today and always. It is for this reason that we as believers can endure in this fallen world. The Savior blesses us with his word and sacraments in his church, in his kingdom. And here we receive the precious forgiveness of our sins, eternal life and salvation in all these means of grace. This helps us, it sustains us with bearing the burdens of the world as we groan, knowing the Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit comes, quickens our hearts to the love of God and the cross of his Son. Through these means of grace, the Lord washes unclean souls. He binds up bruised hearts. He strengthens weak knees. He gives courage to the frightened, hope to the despairing, life to the dying, mercy to the oppressed. He keeps us awake and alert as he calls upon us each day to repent of our sin and to return to the cross of Jesus Christ, directing our hearts to the word of his risen Son, filling us with the Holy Spirit of power and love. Living with the Lord today and forever is your delight. The Lord loves you, his people. He has given you new life. He has forgiven your sins. He has written your name in the Lamb's book of life. You follow Jesus, but not by your own standards. You don't plan your life. You are not in charge. You do not choose your destination. You do not follow when and where it suits you. He has planted you in this time and this place for his purposes. You can complain, you can lament all you want, but the call still stands. You are to simply follow Jesus, to hear his voice, and follow where your shepherd leads you. You don't get to pick and choose. You cling to Christ for your salvation, your life. You obey him. You listen to him, and you do that which pleases him as he is directed in in the word. Your obedience is found in your vocations each and every day. Father, mother, child, worker, student, faithful, obedient in our vocations, doing the works of love, bearing the cross of Jesus, serving the needs of our neighbor, being Christ-like in a world that is so ignorant of Jesus Christ, the only Savior and Lord. Things will not always be the way they are today, 
Today is the day of salvation. Our Lord is patient with you. Today is the day of salvation. The Lord is patient with us. He bears with us. His invitation is to come to church, to hear his word, to worship him, to gather together, to pray, and to pray his praises each and every day. His mercy is given in the word and sacraments as we hear our faithful pastors, men of God, who preach the gospel in its truth and purity. You are not condemned. Yes, you have sin, and you are a sinner. But sinners are called to repent, to believe, and receive the gifts of God, and to put them to good use in our lives and in our world. Things will not always be the way they are today. There will be an end to God's patience. The day of judgment is coming, and it is coming soon. There will be a harvest and a separation. It will be an awful day for the unbeliever, for they will be banished to the fire of hell forever, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. But it will be a great day for believers. The righteous will shine like the sun in heaven. We will suffer no more. Distractions will cease. And we will only behold the face of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But that is then. It is not yet. And because it is not yet, because there will be a separation, because there are those who are unbelieving today, those whom we've grown to love will be separated from Christ, and also them from us for eternity, we must go to them. We must share the gospel with them. We must invite them to the Lord's house. This is our task as the seed is sown, that more would share in the joys of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. So God grant us ears for his word, eyes for our neighbor, that weeds may become wheat, and Jesus alone is glorified as the faithful sower who does his work of sowing, planting, growing, and harvesting, all for the sake of eternal salvation, for all who believe and trust in his name. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.